Okay, as you can see here, we have the music tracks from an edit. And some of them are dual mono with both pairs. And sometimes it's just one mono track all in its lonesome. Uh, what I want to do is simplify this sequence so it looks like this, which is remove the pairs. So you only need one of the two tracks for the dual mono songs. And if it was just one mono track, leave that one mono track. If it's all stereo, you don't have to do any of this. But here's my sequence prepped and ready for export. I'm going to go to Tools and open up the List tool. And over here I have a custom setting. And my options are Assemble. And I only have Name and Record Time Code selected over here. Nothing for picture checked. For sound, only dissolves because we want the full length of the song, including the dissolve. Nothing checked for both picture and sound. This is a tab list. And we want to go ahead and load this. We have two tracks here, uh, which is fine. Preview. You'll see there's two different lists here. One list is the clips on track 7. The other list is the clips on track 9. I'm going to go ahead and save that list. Save it to the desktop. And with the text dumping, we got to do a little bit of work. We're going to remove all the lines that don't have a song name next to them. Cool. All our extra lines are deleted. There's a little tab at the end. You can leave that or delete it. It won't affect us. I'm going to copy that text and paste it in here. Okay, there's gray columns and there's white columns. The gray ones are values that don't really affect you and the white ones are values that do. Alright, now we're going to sort by time code because A7 stuff is all up here and A9 stuff is all up here. But what we really want is it to be in order of the cut in chronological order. And that sort will do it for us. And now let's look at our redundancies. The very frame, don't worry, ends in the first instance. It continues in the second instance with the very next frame. So what I'm going to do is copy that out time, paste it up here, and delete this row. The reason that row exists is because there was a cut in the song, but that really doesn't matter to us. We just want the in and the out. All right, here again, looks like the second instance of Teenage Narrative starts before the first one ends, which means that it's a cross-dissolve, most likely. You can investigate in the sequence, but I already know that's what it is, so I'm going to plow ahead. We're going to keep the early start time, and we're going to copy this out time, the later out time, up to this row. And that will allow us to delete this row. We don't need that second instance. Similar thing here with the Stay All Night, so don't need these additional instances. Go ahead and delete those. Uh, Tristar appears several times and the reason is because we cut back and forth with a phone conversation. So there's music playing on one side, there's music not playing on the other side. You might want to talk with your post producer about whether to log those instances individually or not for the sake of this demo. I'm just going to take the latest out time, copy that, paste it up there, and nuke all these clips in between. Okay, if you have an eagle eye, you might notice this song appears twice. And you'll also notice there's a pretty big time gap between the two usages. It's like about two minutes. The reason is because the song is just reused as a callback. We're going from scene to scene, then back to the previous scene. So because there's such a big gap, we're going to log that twice. Now we're ready to head over to the output tab. Our cue title has populated in this column, timecode in, timecode out, and the duration has been calculated to 24 frames a second. The script for this is already embedded in the uh, sheet in the script editor, so you can call that timecode function pretty easily. Cool, now we're going to copy this data over here in Scratch, and we are going to edit paste special values only. We don't want to paste the formulas. 
And what this scratch sheet is, is just if you want to kind of fill out all the information before you post this data directly into your music cue sheet. Uh, if you want to post this directly into your music cue sheet, by all means, go for it. But this scratch is just an optional area to kind of put your ducks in a row. And that is the music cue sheet generator demonstration. I hope this process saves you more time than it takes to execute. Good luck out there, edit squad.